Dobbin, and I am the director of Delaware Paranormal Research Group and also the author of On the Hunt for the Haunted and Anatomy of a Ghost, um, A Guide to Analyzing the Dead. Both available on our team website, but also at Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a recent investigation the team conducted in um, Whitefield, Virginia at the Octagon Mansion, the historic Octagon Mansion. Uh, it is now a museum, a Civil War memorabilia museum. It's owned by a lovely couple um, whose entire lifetime collection is now um, on display basically in the uh, historic Octagon Mansion. It is supposedly home to um, two uh, spirits. One is believed to be the Reverend Snow, who was the Reverend at the church that is placed right next door. He is actually the one that uh, believe, they believe um, actually built the property to begin with. Um, and then the second one is uh, supposedly a little girl by the name of Audrey. Um, where they arrived at the name of Audrey, I'm not quite sure. But um, supposedly it's a little girl by the name of Audrey. I don't believe Audrey was the Reverend Snow's daughter, but uh, again, I'm not I'm not quite sure of you know where where the origin of Audrey came from. So we were told this by the um, the proprietors of the property, obviously, um, and they told us about you know some of the some of the backstory about the types of things that happened at the, the Octagon quite often. Um, one thing is the movement of objects. Um, they said, uh, for example, they came in one morning and they found, they had a picture, a very large framed photograph of Union soldiers. Now the Reverend Snow would have been on the side of the Confederacy. Uh, so they found this uh, large framed picture of Union soldiers that had been hanging right outside of the Reverend's office on the floor. Um, now, the interesting thing about that is that the hook that the, the picture had been hanging from was still in the wall. And the cable that goes to either side of the picture frame was still intact. So there was absolutely no reasonable explanation as how that picture came off the wall and was on the floor. Other items had been moved as well. Um, they had a small selection or a small uh, collection of um, wa uh, White House uh, plates. And I believe they said it was from the period of Dolly Madison. So um, obviously extremely valuable um, plates that would have been at one point in the, uh, in the White House itself. Um, they came in one morning and one of the plates had come off the shelf where they're displayed and was on the floor. So must have been a heartbreaking morning. Um, so we came in that uh, came in with that in mind. So um, we had a camera set up in the Reverend's office. Um, unfortunately, it only captured about an hour's worth of video before its SD card filled up, and that was the last of the video we got in the Reverend's office that night. Unfortunately. Um, but we did have audio uh, recordings of the Reverend's office all the way through the night. And all the way through the night we got um, several instances of what sounds like objects being moved, um, in some cases moved and dragged. There was a can an electric candle in the room. There were a couple of them actually, um, and they the owners had told us that if you it's like the flashlight um, experiment. If you take the candle and just unscrew it, so all it needs is just a very gentle push, um, that the candle would often come 
come on. So, and we did have that happen, actually. Um, we were in the office for an extended period of time. Uh, we left the office, we came back in very late in the night, and the candle was on. So, uh, and it remained on until we turned it off. So that was, that was very interesting. Um, we had um, other examples of objects moving in the, um, in the upstairs, which were bedrooms, not surprisingly. There was a, a large master bedroom and then there was a what is um, now decorated in, in pink for like a little girl um, and it's filled with uh, antique dolls and then they had another a third bedroom that was painted blue as if for a little boy um, and it was full of old toys and train sets and it would have made some little boy's heart go pitter-patter um, so um, we had a lot of the same type of things going on in those, the, especially the little girl and little boy's room, where um, audio recorders would, would catch the sound of things kind of moving or sounded like moving and sliding. Um, in the dining room, they have a, a special table set aside for the reverend. Um, and on that table, they have situated a door bell. So, um, and they have, they host um, dinners in the dining room. And throughout their multiple dinners, the doorbell has been known to go off as if the reverend is, is um, making an appearance. Uh, so, um, so the REM pod is something that they're they're really familiar with. So we put a REM pod upstairs uh, in the hallway outside the bedrooms. We put a REM pod in the living room, and then we also place a REM pod in the Reverend's office. Um, throughout the evening, at various times, the REM pods in all three um, locations would alarm. Um, the one upstairs was ex um, extremely um, interesting because it on only ever seemed to go off when we weren't in the area. So, um, for example, I was setting up the equipment in the master bedroom. Um, I'm st up there by myself at that time and the REM pod in the hallway would go off. And I would stop what I was doing and I would go out to the hallway and I'd try to communicate with something. Can you make that go off again type of thing? And it wouldn't. And I'd go back into the master bedroom and start setting up, you know, start working again and the REM pod would go off. Um, as I was setting up, my two team members, Marie and Rennie, also came up and we were um, discussing where to set the equipment out in the master bedroom and the REM pod would go off. Um, we'd all troop out there to try to talk to something and it would stop. We'd go back into the master bedroom and the REM pod would go off. So this went on for several, several times. That is not me. It's right here on the staircase. Hello, someone trying to make my acquaintance. Can you do that again? Hello. Was that you? And that is not me. Hello? 
How are you? Are you saying hello? It's very nice to meet you. Are, the, are you the little girl? Audrey. I think her name was Audrey. You've got my attention. <laughs> no, it's, it's right here. It's, it's within the site. It's, it's all over. I like to sleep with it away from my bed. Yes, yeah, I used to have it right. <laughs> yes, hello. I'm, hello. Oh, you wouldn't come downstairs? You made us come up here, did you? And when we walk away, you try to get our attention. Are you playing hide and seek? Is that you? You definitely are trying to get our attention. Yeah. What would you like to say to us? Can you tell us your name? In the Reverend's office, um, we also had Rempon action. Uh, it was later in the evening. We had been at it for quite a few hours at this point because we started setting up at 4, 4 p.m. So um, so we were at it for several hours. We finally uh, gave up, didn't give up, but um, we finally decided that we needed a break. So we all trooped down into the basement of the Octagon and we were down there for a good hour. Well, while we were down there, the REM pod in the Reverend's office went off once and then again um, just Shockingly, I have never heard a REM pod go off in this in this fashion before. It just went off and off and off and off and off, and the tones were changing as if something were circling it. Um, it would warble. It would uh, it just and it went off, and it probably lasted a good ten minutes um, before it stopped. One in the living room uh, was really interesting because it didn't go off all night. Um, but when we came back up from the basement and we realized that the REM pod was going off in the Reverend's office, we all obviously trooped on into the Reverend's office and tried to communicate with whatever was there. Um, we decided that we, um, we had made him a little angry with us because we had played a little trick on him. Uh, there was, on the reverend's table in the dining room, was a bottle of bourbon and a glass that they always toasted the reverend with when they had their meals. Uh, we had taken that off the, 
uh, off the table and we had uh, sat down at the dining room table basically and pretended that we were using his bourbon to toast ourselves. Um, it was just a joke. We didn't actually drink his bourbon. Um, but we had not replaced the bourbon on his table nor his glass. So, um, and it seemed like he was very angry about this because the REM pod, um, after a brief conversation, the REM pod just kept going off and off and off and off and it wasn't stopping and it wasn't cooperating with us any longer. So I told Dave uh, to please go back to the dining room and move the bourbon bottle and the glass back to the Reverend's table. After that was done, then and only then did the, the REM pod in the Reverend's office stop. Um, but while Dave is walking to the dining room, just as he gets to the door of the dining room, the REM pod in the living room goes off. And you can see he was a little startled. We have, uh, in this front room, we had uh, the REM pod go off. It just went off. Now, twice during the night, we were able to have um, actual intelligent communications with the REM pod, meaning that uh, the REM pod would stop, we would ask a question, um, tell, direct it, um, you know, if, if this is a yes answer, please make the REM pod go off. If, if it's not a correct answer, don't set the REM pod off. So we had uh, what I would call a, a, an intelligent communication with the REM pod in the Reverend's office, and we also had a uh, seemingly intelligent communication with the REM pod in the living room. Is that you? Are you trying to say hello? Hi. You don't have to stop. You don't have to stop. Mm -hmm. Very good. We can have a discussion like this. We stopped by earlier, but there didn't seem to be anyone home. Can you back away? Very good. All right. Very good. Are you the reverend? If you're the reverend, make that go off. Okay. Back away. Are you angry with us? Because of the bourbon? Because we didn't put it back. Mm. We're, We're going to put it back. Wow. Very good. Is, are you Audrey? If you're Audrey, can you make that go off? So you're not Audrey. Okay, so you are the Reverend. Yes, sir. Very good. Can you back away? We saw your church. It's a beautiful old church. Yeah. Awesome. So, when you lived here, did you use this room as your office? Can you back away, sir? I think the 
that's his way of telling us he thinks we're dicks and he <laughs> <laughs> Do you disapprove he of like us? like our politics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a yes or a no. Do you mind if we sit down and have a conversation with you? We've been waiting a long, long time tonight. Very good. So you built this house. That's what I have heard. If you're the Reverend Snow, you are the Reverend Snow, correct? If you are, can you make that, that meter go up? Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Can you back away? No, I'm not getting any EMS, but I'm not. I'm flat zero zero. Yeah, me too. Wow. So what room did you use as your study if you didn't use this room? Well, you did use this room. Isn't that a handsome desk they got here? right there you can you can talk into it and tell us what you want us to know if you have if you have if you have the need to you know tell us something. Very good. Are you the little girl? Awesome. Were we talking to you in the library just now? No that wasn't you? But you are here, the little girl. Is your name Audrey? Is your name Audrey? Audrey, it's nice to meet you. You know, I'm a mom too. I didn't have a little girl, I had a little boy. But I know what it's like to be a mom. I heard that you yeah, you were looking for your mom? Is that true? That must be very frustrating. Yeah. Well, I know the people that own this building now, they, they really like you. They even built you a, a bedroom, a little pink bedroom. It's, it's the bomb. Yeah. Do you like that? Do you like those? Yeah? Well, you've got a lot of them, don't you? Mm -hmm. I particularly like this one. She's really pretty. Isn't she pretty? This one over there. Isn't she really pretty? Yeah. Yeah, she's a really pretty doll. Usually dolls aren't that pretty, but that one's a fancy, pretty one. She's heavy, though. Isn't she heavy? She's too heavy to pick up. What do you think? No, you can pick her up. Well, that's cool. So, Audrey, do you have a brother or a sister? You do. Awesome. Do you have a brother? Do you have a sister? Brothers? Sisters? You 
got to have one or the other, or both. Hmm. <laughs> we had a number of small, what might have been EVPs, but they weren't of adequate strength or volume for me to include here. We did, however, get one that, um, that was quite remarkable uh, in the dining room. Actually, it sounds like a little girl. And what had happened was myself, Marie, and Rennie were in the dining room. It was during setup again. Um, and Marie had dropped a couple of small batteries. She gets, I think she gets down on the floor and is trying to, you know, find the batteries. Um, and we're kind of talking in amongst ourselves. And then you hear what sounds like a sing-song uh, little girl saying, batteries. The coup de grace of the night, however, was the doll moving. Um, we had been told by the owners that there was a certain doll that was located in the living room um, and that if you placed her in a certain position, um, very often she would seemingly move. So um, and basically the position was um, to line her feet up with a uh, power outlet that was in the floor. So we did that, Marie did that. Uh, she lined the doll up, you know, so that her toes were right in line with the power outlet. Um, they left. We all, all four of us go upstairs. You can hear our feet on the stairs. And right after we depart that area, you can hear several, um, what sounds like something moving. Now, unfortunately, the camera, the, the room is dark and the camera is in the far corner. Um, and you can't really make out the doll, but you can quite clearly hear the sounds of something being moved or dragged. Um, late in the evening, right about the time we were getting ready to break down, Marie and Rennie return to the living room, and they discover that the doll had actually moved um, several inches from where it, they had very carefully placed it. So um, that by far was, was the best uh, evidence that we had gotten. All I know is that little girl got lit in her behind, literally. Yeah, it looks way up there.
was thinking too. She's turned. She was more this way. I put her straight. She was. You put her straight, and she was. Yeah, I put her here, and then I moved her straight more. And I remember sitting over there, and she was. This doll was turned more. Yeah, and now it's sort of turned a little bit back, closer to what, the way it was, but it's still not straight. As the personal experiences, uh, our teammate Rennie was, uh, we were all upstairs actually on the second floor. Um, I was in the girls' room, Marie was in the boys' room, Dave was in the master bedroom, and Rennie was sitting out in the hall. So we were all in various locations um, observing. So Rennie was sitting in the hall with her, uh, and she could look down the staircase. And she said, so she was sitting there and she thought she saw a shadow moving downstairs at the foot of the staircase. So at this point, her attention is peaked. So she continues to stare at the, down the stairs at the foot of the staircase and she saw a shadowy figure move across the staircase. Unfortunately, we didn't have a camera in that position um, and so we didn't catch it. So it, it remains a personal experience, but, but wow. <laughs> that would have been wonderful to catch.